Um, today's class will be a continuation from what we did last week, or no, last Wednesday, actually. I'm sorry. Um, and what we did last Wednesday was, let me show you, a lot of this stuff. We did a lot of stuff with the flower sack using basic forms of the torso. And, uh, like, basic geometric and basic, like, kind of massed forms of the torso and stuff. So we're going to be doing some more of this today, more more flower sack practice, because Monday, for my animation class, one of the um, homework assignments, for, actually two of the homework assignments for the Monday animation class will be animating a flower sack character. And a flower sack is essentially a super simple, like, character design that lets animators like kind of wrap their head around posing out a character or like trying out physics and stuff without really being too concerned with like making a really good character drawing and stuff or too much detail. And it can be a foundational thing for creating poses and stuff. But this is our bud, the flower sack. We're going to be doing some more of these today. In fact, I'm going to encourage people to warm up with him uh, for our warm up round. This is some of the kind of stuff we did last Wednesday of doing some draw or some photos using geometric forms and then trying to do like a flower sack version of it and so on. Uh, but yeah, let's see here. This is a slide that is unfinished currently. I'm going to be working on a couple slides for next week that involve breaking down like the anatomy of the torso. We're going to be going over some George Bridgman stuff. Like this is a drawing by George Bridgman that we're going to be studying. Um... This is an, uh, a semi-unfinished slide that we're probably going to get to use today, which involves using, combining several of the ideas that, that we've been going over. And uh, I'll, where I'll explain this uh, step by step when we get to it. But the, uh, the main difference in this one is the, um, the shoulder girdle, the simplified shoulder girdle, that kind of cubic form that's sort of intersecting with, that, uh, with the egg shape of the rib cage there. And uh, this is one of the other new things we're going to be talking about today, which is the uh, the egg on an angular box or egg on a box or whatever uh, way to handle the ribcage and pelvis. We'll be talking a little bit more about that. And also the box forms. We did a little bit of the box forms with the two box method last um, Wednesday, but this is a but I'm going to be pushing people in the direction of doing a triple box approach if they're doing box forms. So we'll get to doing a little bit of this today too. But um, the main thing that I'm going to be pushing people in the direction of today is like, oh yeah, we did we did flower sacks and stuff, sure. We did flower sacks and we're going to do some more flower sacks, but the thing I want to be pushing people in the direction of today is like taking the other forms that we're kind of learning and practicing. And I want people um, putting it together and treat, treating this these kinds of things like a little bit like a flower sack. And that's something that you can invent and play with and uh, and try different expressive like, like functionally this thing kind of works a little bit like a like the flower sack. That's your kind of like basic rig for a torso that you can uh, distort out and stuff and sort of um, establish a character body with and stuff. I kind of wanted people to make the mental connection of like working with a flower sack and working with more kind of anatomical characters or something, basically. But anyway, uh, the main stuff we went over on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday was the bean form, which is like a you start with a line of action. You use two ellipses and you connect them with like kind of fleshy mass of paying attention to which side is active, which side is inactive, like times when it might be symmetrical like this, especially if it's straight on. But the inactive side being compressed versus the active side, which is being stretched. You want to pay attention to that in the torso. And we also, I, this is when I touched on a little bit of the, the line of action, the uh, few times box of line of action. Of course, we're going to be doing a more, we're going to be doing this more advanced version today. A little bit of the basic forms of the torso. So I didn't really get too descriptive with this slide, but this is kind of like a little overview reference slide. And here's a thing I did previously for another class that I that I took in 2017 that will be handy for me to uh, use as a tool for when we get more into anatomy next week. And it's a little bit more of like kind of playing with a bean form style thing, and um, a little bit how to mix it up. 
we're gonna get started right now uh, on some warm-ups uh, I want people well I want people like I want people either um, I want people either using this kind of like lima bean form or I want them make I want them uh, drawing a flower sack for the warm-ups right now uh, so I'm gonna get started very shortly let's see what the clock time is Goody, we'll have about 20 minutes to do a 20 minute warm-up I'm gonna get the clock started on that right now okay Google set timer for 20 minutes sure 20 minutes starting now so up on the screen right there is actually no here change it to a different thing for the warm-ups at least let's use like like this pose bank I think yeah, here we go we're gonna use this just kind of um create some flower sack characters or use like the lima bean approach to the figures You do have to make like little judgment calls when doing a flower sack where of like where the um where the about what implies the head uh what implies like the thigh versus what implies like the calf or the leg or something that's part of the fun of doing these like it's not just like practice for the torso but it's also learning how to translate a, a um Learning how to translate a, com a complex pose into a character, into a cartoon character or an animated character. I do want to encourage people also to do invented flower sacks too. We have two minutes on each of these poses, so maybe spend one minute drawing a pose and another minute um, inventing one. You're going to be warming up on these. We might do like a second round of these flower sacks today too. But um, I'm going to be having us do the box forms and some of the other things. Because we're going to be building towards kind of using the idea of this to uh, make some uh, more anatomical stuff. Or more like traditional figure drawing shapes rather. There's going to be some anatomy today. There's like a little bit of like how the forms of the ribcage were. Oh, that's not a good torso pose. Got a better folder for torso poses if this one gives us duds. Let's see, royalty free. Yeah, let me know if the music overpowers my voice at any point. I'm going to put on some synth in the background. small if you can. Three of these are a bit big for the page, I think. Ideally I want to I want to fit like everything on one page for this one drawing set. That includes the invented poses, so I'm gonna need a lot of space. Yeah this is the warm-up round so just just loosen up. You can do these, or you can do like the um, uh, the lima bean, which is like this thing where you start with a line of action. Just 
Spear for the ribcage, spear for the pelvis. You decide which side is active and inactive, if at all. You kind of connect them like that. Not a very good torso pose, but I'm going to try to see what I can do with it. For a flower sack. parts that I think aren't quite working. We can retry them a bit. If the music isn't too loud, by the way, just let me know in uh, Twitch or Discord if the music is a little bit too loud or whatever. Some of the things I'm kind of trying to look for when I, as I'm warm, just as, as I'm doing the warm up round, is where I can like compress the um, the flower sack and push it. Because like there's a lot of judgment calls you have to make inherently translating a human pose into a care into a simple character like this. One thing you should try to look for is like decide where the, the flower sack is is gonna be more squished or stretched out. Like for this one, I kind of feel like the flower sack be more stretched. Kind of.
Another thing to look for when doing these um, flower sack drawings is you want to look for like where the top of the torso and where the pelvis is tilting. You can get that active and inactive versus inactive side going. A lot of interpretation that goes into these for sure. Yeah, everyone just get loosened up. Don't worry about it. like your first drawings of the session aren't going to be the best anyway. So may as well just try to have some fun with it. talk or not. I do encourage doing like more. I'm going to actually take a break away from um, some scribbles. This is another thing I'm actually going to encourage people to do here. I'm going to take a quick detour from doing these to do some line drills. Get some line drills and stuff to get my hand warmed up. Some S curves. Moving my hand and my arm around to get warmed up.
about to get super hydrated after the during the break. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? There's four minutes and fourteen seconds left. Cool. Hmm. Actually, we did have enough time to kind of draw a little bit larger for this page. I want to ask people in chat, do I sound a little bit fatigued right now? Because I'm kind of feeling a bit fatigued at the moment. Hopefully, hopefully that's just like a swig of water away from fixing the... I really do want to see if I can get a good session in tonight. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to mix it up a bit on this one. Let's see. Let's see one of the forms that we're going to be covering tonight. Pelvis cubes probably tilt a little far forward, but let's see here, like this. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? One minute and 34 seconds left. All right, we'll pause on this one. I need to get up and stand, I need to get up and get some water. So uh, another minute or so, uh, I'll add some time to the timer. So then when it, it goes down, well, we'll be uh, back from our break. Uh, also, if you've done any of the homework that I assigned on Wednesday, um, post it in classroom chat, and we'll take a look at it. And I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll probably do like some demos if you want to get some feedback on some of your work. Uh, for if you've done any of the homework, or if you've done some warm ups, and you want to get juiced or whatever, um, post them in the Discord classroom chat, and uh, we'll, and I'll do uh, some draw over demos when I get back here. I'm gonna grab some water. Right here, I'll throw the Discord up. So we'll get a live feed of when people um, put their images in the chat. I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some water.
Alright, I'm back. So, doing a little personal evaluation. I'm gonna try to keep the glass going for at least two hours. Well, at least two hours. But if I'm still feeling really fatigued, if I don't get like, like, uh, if I'm. If I still feel. If, I might get like a second wind or something, but we'll see. But, um, feeling a little bit fatigued right now, so I might end the class an hour early. So we'll keep going for another hour and a half. Um, Bexel, uh, Bex of All Trades asks, uh, says, another university student here who's gone through this a bit and has an opinion. I found some, I found that taking some figure drawing anatomy classes greatly stunted my creative drive. Of course, it's important, but I don't think the order really matters. The best thing is to work on both at the same time so you learn the anatomy and don't lose your creative flow. Yeah, kind of. Because what anatomy is, is it's information. Um, and it's a lot of really complex information. And it's really difficult to process that and u utilize it in a way that's useful for you. So it can, it can actually hurt you if you go too far into anatomy too quickly. Um, it can hurt your figure drawing and stuff because it will mess up your ability to... Um, see connective gesture and break things into simple shapes but that's why people like george bridgman which we'll be going into some more next week are really important um take a look at uh people's let's see here okay google stop some neat little Flower sack warm up. Some of these are kind of stretching out the flower sack a little bit too much. That yeah, looks more like a slug. One thing about the flower sack is you want to kind of maintain the volume. Sorry, I didn't understand. Okay, Google, stop. One thing you want to uh, one thing you want to keep with the flower sack is you want to maintain some kind of a sense of volume. But this is good. Made up poses, reference poses. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. I think we're pretty good on these. I don't think I really have to do too much of a draw or demo on them. So instead, I'm going to get over into a little bit of lecturing a little bit about, about the slides that I've done so we can get started on these. All right, so first of all, a uh, quick review. Yeah. Active and inactive, active in, in, in active side and using the bean form of the torso to simplify the shapes right here. Um, the basic shapes getting into the torso box forms. So we're going to be playing with this for the next uh, 25 minute session. Um, or the next 20 minute session or so uh, of Basically, we start with the, it's sort of like the um, it's sort of like the, the lima bean, except we use three boxes like this. So it's going to be like a line of action like that, and like three boxes that we kind of invent. But you can, you can do like a freehand perspective on them too if you want. Like invent, imagine that there's a vanishing point. The main thing is is that you want to like keep in mind like like the three dimensionality of it. You want to get like kind of you want to make doing this these little things kind of second nature. Uh, play, you can play with counterposing your boxes and kind of pushing it and stuff. And if you notice right here, this is a page from George Bridgman, and he shows the, how he uses them. And these are going to be foundational for the stuff we're going to build off of them for George Bridgman's anatomy stuff next week. Um, so you can add stuff to these too. Like, there's going to be, well, easy, easily enough time to like start with this and then add things to it. Like you can add indications of the limbs. Um, another thing you can do that I mentioned here is you can even try curving the cube a bit and integrating the line of action into it, instead of um, instead of or or instead of or in conjunction with drawing a line of action first. Like you can actually just like integrate a gesture into the pose itself by curving the cube slightly. And here's some other examples like this. Uh, here's a triple orb approach right here that you can use. That's using this like you can do these quickly, just to kind of like get oriented a bit, stuff. But you can also use the lima bean method and 
add those little kind of like side bits on there of the active and inactive side. That was just like a quick example of like some quickie warm up practice. Uh, another thing that we're going to be looking at this one after we oh, so that we're going to do this after we do the the box forms one. But um, this one is the egg and uh, is the egg on an egg on a box approach, where we uh, use an egg form for the for, for the rib cage um, on top of the on top of the box of the pelvis. And then uh, the last thing we're going to do tonight is this, which is combining the different ideas together. There's a little bit of the lima bean, the lima bean in there. There's a little bit of the box forms in there. There's a little bit of the um, there's a little bit of the flower sack in this, and there's a little bit of like the, in like there's a, the little bit where there's a box form, which is really important right here. The biggest difference in this from like the um, the biggest dif difference between this and the um, the egg dog rib cage and pelvis here is uh, this little kind of shoulder girl right here. Well, that and like the fleshy mats around the center, here, which is taken from the bean form. But yeah, with a rig like this, like with a simple kind of rig like this, you can just start playing with it. Just start having fun with like making these like torsos. Like these aren't perfect. These are just like quick little sketches and stuff. Um, I want people to just start get uh, once we start to digest this stuff a little more. I want people playing with the torso considerably more. So um, let's move on to doing the tri cube. Uh, I will actually post the tri cube. No, yeah, I'll actually post the tri cube uh, page in uh, classroom chat. For people to refer to. Mm, actually, I think it might be a good idea for me to. Let's see here. I'm gonna save this. Save a new copy. E F. Open. E. I have an idea for how I'm gonna display this. So let's, let's see, open up the there's a box forms slide. Wait, that's not. And then F will be the one that I'm drawing. So that one will go here. There we go. Cool. All right, so this will be my drawing space right here. Uh, let me bring up, see what will be a good mix here. So I like what would be a good mix that has a good mix of like the torso stuff that we want. Not too sure about this. We need stuff with more clear torso, so I might need to reuse my my athletes folder. Let me try this. This one's got box figures in it. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this because this has box forms in it, and this is kind of like in the vein of what I want people doing. So I'm gonna let's see here increase the timer to about three minutes I'd say because I want people doing inventive poses in addition to the figures that are on screen. So do that. That's nice. That's very nice. Yeah, perfect. All right, let's get started. Okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes starting now. All right. Pay attention to those angles. That's like the most important thing to right out straight off the bat when you're doing these kind of cube forms. Uh, I'm going straight into just doing the cubes themselves, but I'm going to also be like doing a line of action as well to do more of these. Just kind of getting keyed into it. I'm used to drawing like these cubes freehand, sort of judging, uh, judging them in space a little bit. This page also shows off some of the other stuff we're going to be getting into in the future with like anatomical landmarks of the figure. we we'll probably touch on some of it tonight, but we'll see. Mainly concentrating on the forms, not so much the landmarks. The landmarks are important as like kind of markers on your GPS system of 
the bones of the body, the bony masses of the body. We're not doing anything fancy, we're just doing, we're keeping it simple. Probably just add like a little indication of like the arms here if you like. Arms and the legs. This is from Michael Hampton's book. Um, he's someone who I want to be digging into more in the near future. He's really good for structure analysis of, of uh, forms of the figure. Hmm. I think that's a little high. There we go. Maybe shade in that side before in like the 10 seconds we have left. So this one, uh, we're presented with a figure that is not a cube form, but same idea. Conver let's convert it into a cry cube. We have from the, the indication on the sternum the, down to the pelvis. It's kind of a sense of the same sort of curve of the line of action, although my curve is going to go a little bit, a little bit more along the back of the body a bit compared to what we're seeing there. The big thing to watch out for when you're doing these, you want to see, you want to like pay attention to whether you're able to see like more of the top of the rib cage or the bottom of the rib cage. In this case, I'm kind of feeling like we can sort of see the underside of the rib cage more, so I'm sort of tilting the top of the cube like this. And we can definitely see the top of the pelvis. That's being a tilted accordingly. But like, there's gonna be times when you are able to see like, more of the top of the rib cage, and you're gonna need to see the more of the top of the cube form. Marked in red right there is a very important part of the torso we're gonna to be getting more into next week. A kind of bicycle handlebar of the collarbone and these actually move up and down as you raise and lower your arm and stuff they're anchored about here they're very very complicated they're they're, they're best thought of as like a bicycle handlebar they're one of the trickier things on the uh, body to draw and not least of which because they are connected to the deltoids of the shoulders, which is one of the trickiest, most mal malleable, complicated um, parts of the most visible muscle anatomy on the body. Like the deltoid changes shape a lot. But next week we'll be going into kind of we'll be going into kind of simplified forms for how to handle it, among other things. We 
go. Nice, nice box form. This pose isn't particularly lively, admittedly, but good fodder to get people to wrap their heads around this concept, for sure. But you can see the same principle of like creating box forms out of the figure through interpretation is a principle that, of interpretation that applies to when you're doing a character like that flower sack we, did, we were doing earlier. You have to make judgment calls on what the abstract forms are. Of course, in this case, the abstract forms are right there for us, but they have been interpreted for us in this drawing. And this is just to get us to wrap, up, wrap our heads around this concept before we start applying it to uh, existing figure poses. Which should be in this mix as well. So I'm not going to worry about adding in the, the cubic masses for the rest of the limbs, because we're just concentrating on the torso right now. I'm just going to add some little indications to the limbs. Maybe add at least the ground plane that he's standing on. Down there. Yeah, the shoulders are very difficult. They are not to be taken lightly. Um, we'll be spending, um, we might even be spending a whole class session just on the shoulders. They're really tricky. We will get into them next week, but I really think it would be worth it to have like one class session where we just focus on the shoulders. Uh, not necessarily next week. We're still kind of like going from the big picture first before we dial it, dial it in. But at the very least I want to get some kind of a working simplified model going that people can repetitively practice to wrap their heads around the shoulders. Necks and neck placement? Yeah, we yeah, will work on that too. Uh, for now I'm just having people like, if, they're, if you're doing a neck, just like do a simplified C curve or something like something like this. Like we're going to be getting to this kind of egg shape for the torso here a little bit later, and then it's usually going to be like kind of like a hole for the top of the neck. Just just do a just do like a neck, um, just like a C curve neck. So we're not too concerned with the neck anatomy today. Here, are the let's get a little preview of some of the anatomical forms we're going to be messing with next week. So everything that we're doing today, like bits and pieces of it, we're going to be repeating next week as well. I already paid my dues doing box forms earlier, so I'm going to jump right into doing the egg form rib cage stuff now, because I kind of feel like I need that for practice at the moment. As you can see on this screen, yeah, I mean, like, this stuff applies to animal drawing as well. And I've been itching to do an animal drawing class for the longest time. Just haven't really figured out how I'm going to slot it in, or if I should dedicate a day to it or something.
the way I would teach it would probably be like applying a lot of like fundamentals kind of like this to um, animal bone and, and muscle construction, musculature and stuff. So it would also be a draftsmanship workout in addition to studying the knowledge of the animals. If we do do that, I'm going to probably assign some very tough homework for it. Like some stuff where I, might, I would be expecting people to be spending multiple hours like drawing an animal skeleton. Very worth it, by the way. Okay, that one. I'm not too sure about this. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah you can still use this. This is more Michael Hampton stuff. Quite a bit of his stuff in this folder. Here, I'm kind of like using this to find the tilt of the pelvis and the top of the shoulders. Or about where I think the rib page is tilting. Which I think is actually off, but I'm just going to make a judgment call here and do it for the purposes of this. Study, study like this. The thing about your judgment calls is sometimes they'll be incorrect and you kind of have to accept that, but you've got to keep rolling with it. As long as you're like consciously aware, hmm, this is kind of off. But I have to stick, I have to roll with this in the time that I have left. Maybe I can come back and fix it later. Or maybe I should roll, roll it back and fix it if it's bad enough. Or if it's a habit I want to break. In this case, I think it's okay for me to do it like this, even though it's not quite what's happening with the upper torso. Because um, it's still counterposing cubes. So while I'm at it here on this drawing, I'm going to add some little bit of details to it here. Stretched out versus a squished side. Connecting up with these corners to the other corner of the cube. And for fun, I'll add this kind of thing right here. Now, dude, that line of action is not quite the spine. This is the spine, but probably be more about here. The thing about these studies is you don't want to overwhelm yourself. You want to make a simple statement and move on. So here we got some animation or manga artist kind of um, approaches to figure. Pick one of these and uh, one or two of these maybe if you have time and make box forms out of them. So in this case, I can use the bendy boxes a little bit, especially on that figure on the upper right. That character's got a little bit of an exaggerated torso, so I'm going to kind of play with that a bit.
throw a cube in there and kind of flip ahead. It's not quite the tilt that's happening there, but I'm just gonna toss it in. So this is also not as like active and lively as pushed as the one up there. That's okay, we're just getting some practice in. Playing with using these tools. Love that foreshortening going on there. So this is something I found at random on Pinterest for like Korean animator artist kind of reference stuff. Like the really simple way that they do those heads. Keeping note of direction without having to draw too many lines. There we go. A lot of torsos on that page. See how many of these I can quick sketch. What I'm going to do here is another thing that I didn't show off on my slides, which is called the bendy box. This is where you do the entire shape of the torso in like a um, bendy box, kind of like this, but I, which I did here I also. You can do this too, by the way. Although it would help if you kind of drew through the, through the form for the pelvis at least. Let's see, maybe I'll throw some inventive. I feel like doing some inventive ones real quick, just to kind of loosen up a bit. Maybe increase my brush size a bit. The triangle area is easy for me to replicate, it's the stuff around it. What do you mean by the triangle area? I assume you're talking about a particular zone of anatomy. Siri thought I was talking to them. That's wild. Yeah, some of the stuff we're going to be going into more next week. Uh, actually, piece by piece as we get more into this stuff. We'll be like, I'll be showing people how to break stuff more into basic shapes. Okay, Google, stop. So you get things like this thigh that I'm making here with a cube on the end there for the kneecap and so on. There we are. Little beans. Okay, Google, set timer five minutes. Five minutes. And that's starting now. Cool, so we're on a five minute break. Um, I'm gonna keep going for at least another hour, I would say. If I do get a second wind and we can go to the full three hours tonight, we'll do that. But, uh, let's see, what, we're, what are we gonna do for the next class? Oh, that's a good page. I'm gonna actually give us special time on this page, I think. Reset it and find it again. There we go. We can come back to that one because that's a really good page to spend some extra time on. For sure.
All right, so we're on a little five minute break right now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try getting some yogurt. Maybe that might give me some, give me a little energy boost. Oh yeah, that felt like it felt, that felt like it helped a little. Yeah, I'm still feeling pretty fatigued this evening. Raboots, I think you're like uh, the big problem, big recurring problem I see with how you approach drawing is uh, um, I don't see uh, I don't see you pushing a lot of line confidence. Um, like these get kind of mushy and stuff. Like I think that there might be something wrong with how you're how you're pulling your lines. That's really kind of making it hard for you to um, have a steady hand, steady hand, and sculpt out your shapes and stuff. So I'd want to find out how you're um, how you're holding your pencil. It's a it's a recurring problem I see in, in your drawing. Red Wrath. A little bit of the same issue, but you're you're um, working in a different medium, so it kind of takes a little transition, I think. Kind of uh, get used to using pencil or whatever, especially at, at a different size ratio. But try using a more try clearing out space so you have more of your arm to move around instead of your wrist. That's the thing about rab boots. Like I want you to draw from your draw from your arm and your shoulder and not your wrist as much as possible. Pretty good sense of personality in these. Uh, some of them could be pushed more, I'd say. Okay, Google, stop. These are pretty good. Uh, some of them, though, have problems with like. You want to watch for like, uh, for example, where it starts breaking being a cube. Like, there's sometimes you can kind of exaggerate and bend things, but this one, kind of like, especially up like this this whole th this whole thing right here looks a little weird, even like this. Doesn't really feel very, like, 3D cube-like here. Uh, but you got a better sense of it, like, you, you pulled it off better on this, for example, and on this, and on this. Better get back. Yeah, I see that. Uh, like I said, you want, um... You want to be, like like pulling pulling your lines with a little bit more control if possible. I don't know.
do some line drills and stuff to make sure that you uh, are able to pull lines, do like curve uh, curved lines, and do do some ellipses and cubes and other things. To try to get your uh, try to try to get warm, a little bit more warmed up. I would say that might help. I don't know. I'm a little fatigued right now. I'm pretty badly fatigued right now, actually, so I'd be given better fatigue if I wasn't so off at the moment. But yeah. After we get done after we get done here. Um Okay, Google, uh set timer for twenty minutes. Okay, twenty minutes. Starting now. Alright, so we're gonna spend some extra time on this one. I might actually reset the drawing too. But um So I want people to try to push making really confident cubes and action lines. Like make a decision. There I made a decision. I'm gonna stick with this decision. I could fix it a little bit later, but I'm gonna stick with this decision. So I'm gonna make another decision here. Of the angle of that head making the top plane with the head. It's not quite accurate to what's up, what's up there, but I'm making decisions here. It's going with it. So I'm making a decision here of what angle I'm putting the head at. Now I'm going to make, be making a decision for the top of the rib cage, side plane of the rib cage, the angle of the rib cage, I'm keeping these lines parallel with each other because it is a cube. If you're doing kind of warp force perspective thing, you can do stuff like this, for example, like an exaggerated sort of cube kind of thing, but we're not doing that for this one. Although that is present. Oh, no, actually, no, you could do it on these because that is actually present in these drawings, by the way. Um, I, I'm not doing it on this one, though. Because I just want something that kind of riffs on the pose that I'm seeing, but is going to kind of help reorient me a bit. But these kind of poses would be good to like do verbatim copies of on your own time. Like really spend time to kind of like plot through each line, line by line, and get it fairly accurate to what you're seeing a little bit. Let's keep those parallel, because I'm minimizing the perspective. It's uh, the, the force perspective, or freehand perspective, that's happening here. So I... Some of the decisions I've made, I've turned the pelvis away from us a little bit more. Which means this side, if it were compressing, it would be compressed a little bit more. I got the center line right here. That's enough out of that one. Let's grab another one. Man, I'm going to reset the timer real quick on this one. I'm going to take the one on the top left and see what I can make of it. So I'm going to start with the front plane of the face, side plane of the head. So maybe we want to establish the head before going even into the line of action for this one. So there's kind of like an S curve, maybe S curve on this one. Something like this. I'm going to start all the way down at the bottom with the 
pelvis. Taking the top plane of the pelvis. Anyway, the point of this is like, you don't really want to rush it, you just want to take it at your own pace. And the point is to try to process information. You're not trying to get pretty drawings out of doing studies like these, you're trying to ruminate on and process what you can. If you try, if you start like getting anxiety about whether or not make, you're making good drawings, then that's the point. You're missing the point. Good drawings will start to come out of you shifting that men your mentality in that direction, but you won't be like consciously aware of it. That you won't be like setting out, oh, I've got to make a good drawing. You'll just be setting, oh, I've got to make good practice, and then better drawings will come out of good practice. Underline about they reposition this out a bit. make this maybe a little bit more like the uh, reference pose just a bit I do appreciate how like this one this slide shows off like some of the simplified forms of anatomy of the torso like I want to, I would might want to dig into something like this because this is like a good model that you could do like repetitive exercises of. To kind of wrap yourself around key concepts and orient yourself. And I appreciate how they start with a cube and then they go and they break inward to it to turn it into an egg shape. Which is kind of what I'm playing with a bit right now for the reference. Did you send this particular picture to the Discord later? Um, yeah, maybe. I'm gonna just like collapse after I get done here though. So remind me in uh, the Spaceball Furies uh, classroom section. Of my of my classroom section of the Discord. You could also screenshot it from the um, the stream as well. That also works. Hmm. Now that I see it. The ang the angle of the pelvis isn't quite right from what I drew, so I'm gonna maybe just cheat and tilt that a bit. That's not going to be a problem because the stuff that I drew in between is kind of a fleshy mass that pushes and pulls depending on where stuff is positioned. I think the torso is leaning back a little bit more than what I had to. But in any case, we're going to move on to another slide. So here's a good slide. So this one shows off some counterposing um, cube forms, although they're handled a little bit more organically for these mannequins. But they have the same kind of thinking in mind of like those of the cubes that we're using. 
like 3D forms and whatever. Someone asked how, how they approach the timing of, of poses, well, um, you don't want to rush, you want to slow down. Whether you're, uh, well first off, you want to have a plan of attack for what you're going to do uh, for the study. You want to aim to get something out of it. Uh, like when I'm, when I'm moving from thing to thing doing these, I'm thinking, what can I get out of this pose? Uh, obviously, like when you're warming up, you kind of need to kind of get all the kinks out of your system and to warm up to that mentality so you can slow down. So it's okay to kind of rush in and scribble and mess up and stuff, especially when you're warming up. But the best way to, to speed up is actually to slow down. When you make smarter decisions about uh, where to place lines and so on, uh, you'll actually get a lot faster. That's something that, that I'm struggling with. That some days clicks with me better than other days. I think we're gonna we're gonna skip to another pose because we've been on this one for a while. There we go. That's a good page right there. All right. Okay, Google. How much time left on timer? You've got 7 minutes and 55 seconds remaining. Very good. So I've actually copied from this page before, because this is from the Build Blue Drawing Manual. And I've used this page before multiple times. Not in this class, but just like years from going back years. So I'm going to... get started and like a little bit of copy of one of them a little bit, but I'm going to kind of let myself wander. But what, what we're seeing right here with Wilku's use of like these kind of bendy cubes is what I was talking about with that, adding curves to, into the cubes themselves, integrate them with the line of action. And also if you notice, he's got he's using like singular bendable cubes for the whole of the torso. We are focusing on the torso today, but you can throw some limbs in there too. So anyway, there's always a plan of attack. It depends what you're what you are studying in the time that you have. 
Like if you're if you're focused in more on like shape construction versus gesture, or if you're trying to do a vignette of anatomy or something. But in any case, you should always like have a plan of what you're doing and for whatever time you're doing the poses for. The worst habit you can build from, from like doing time poses if you're not like consciously trying to fight against it is uh, rushing things, like trying to finish things too early. Like it's okay to leave a drawing unfinished. Uh, you, you want to make use of your time in a way that is that like helps you. Like you're, what are you trying to get out of this pose that you're doing? So I'm going to change it to another that, and then I'm going to change it to the next pose. Very good. Got some very, very nice boxy forms on this page, for sure. Really showing off, like, the principle of the bendy boxes and integrating line of action directly into and gesture directly into the box forms that you use to construct the body. a little high up there. As long as you're not hurting yourself, it's sometimes, even if you are feeling a little fatigue like I am now, to still kind of hit the art gym, you know? Because there are times you are going to need to like work through feeling a little bit of fatigue. So as long as you don't burn yourself out. So I'm being very conscious of what I'm doing right now. And uh, trying to see, and trying to judge whether or not I'll be able to pace myself for at least another half hour. Like I said, uh, I will probably cut it at full three hours. Uh, so if um, so I wanted to get to, um, to do the uh, more advanced stuff today that I showed off that I wanted to do at the ending, thinking for the last sesh we might turn it into something kind of fun to sort of cool down. Fun or low-key or chill to kind of cool down. Because I am feeling kind of fatigued and I am going to need to probably cut this session an hour short. Okay Google, how much time left on the timer? One minute and seven seconds left. That's cool. Alright. 
So I'm going to put us on break right now. Um, okay, Google, add five minutes to timer. Done. Five minutes added to your timer. I'm going to try getting up and stretching a little bit. That might help get some of the blood flowing a bit for this last sesh. Uh, we'll try to go for at least another half hour. Hmm. Okay, that helps a little. Yeah, I definitely do need to rest. All good though. Um, for those of you who would normally be here for the full three hours, I would suggest after the class is over, um, continue to practice on your own. You can rewatch the video from Wednesday too, and also you can watch the Twitch replay of this. Um, like I said, I kind of wanted to get into. Today I was hoping to get into doing more of. Find it. More. I was hoping to do this. Show this off. Yeah, maybe maybe I could do it. Actually, it's not too not too much of a stretch. I mean, uh, are you guys? If you guys are pretty comfortable with doing this, of like doing an egg shape for the rib cage and a cube for the pelvis, we could probably just do that for the remainder of the time. Here, let me find some suitable poses in here that might work for that. Let me see if there are enough suitable poses in here to do that with. But in any case, let's see here. Yeah, let's give it a shot. <coughs> Excuse me. So the last sesh we're going to do today, we're going to try to take a dry run attempt at this stuff on the left here. Um, that means this is very important. We'll go over this. You want, I want you to treat these like a, like we've been treating the flower sacks. Um, in that you can have you can have fun playing posing them out and stuff. You can invent them and so on. So um, line of action, suitable line of action, S curve or C curve or whatever. Uh, pelvis. Pelvis box form. Making this a little bit big, bigger, it's a little bit small. So, in addition to that, you want to you want to like keep in mind where like the neck is in this on the tor in the torso. In this case, it's like a, I'm drawing through the form, so that neck is actually like. Kind of like blocked off from visibility a little bit by the rib cage, the, the up tilt of the rib cage. Then you need to kind of then you have to decide like how the torso is twisting. For example, I'm putting it over here. Here's the center line of the torso, right there, with the sternum. The underside of the rib cage right here. And now I'm now I'm actually changing it so. The head, the head is uh, the top of the ribcage is tilted more towards us. So then, taken from the bean body, we got the active side. It's hooking into the the fleshy mass. It's kind of hooking into the top of where the pelvis would be. And uh, then the squishy side here. The active side and the inactive squishing side. Then we get this. C curve for the neck. Just to, I didn't even need to draw 
that many. I'm in a bad habit of like petting my lines lately, so I've really got to start fighting that again. So you could add a head up there and stuff if you wanted. You can put a little side plane in there, kind of show the direction. Uh, but one of the big new things for this is get a couple parallel lines here for like the top of the rib cage, sort of following the, the angle of the, the base of the neck a little bit. And then this is like simple forms of the shoulder girdle. Using these kind of boxes that are kind of connecting to the torso, like almost kind of like the egg has another cube that's sort of intersecting and clip no clipping through the egg. So then like part of the, the egg bulges out here a bit. Okay, Google, stop. So we're going to go for broke. We're going to do this for 25 minutes. We're going to try to do as many of these little things as we can. Okay, Google, set timer for 25 minutes. Okay, 25 minutes. Starting now. So I'm pretty comfortable with inventing these. Uh, we'll be, you feel free to use the on-screen reference to kind of orient yourself, but I'm going to try to like invent these for the most part. Unless there's a particularly good uh, example to copy study on here. Or riff on riff from. Well, it's all good. Like I'm fatigued to get it, f fatigued today, but self through self discipline and pacing myself, I'm still able to get a good amount of practice in. Uh, I got way more drawing in earlier today, and that's why I'm fatigued. There was a mix of like some project work and then I was doing preps, prep studies for this class. I keep teasing at it, but I, I really want to in the future do like a video game screen of some kind. If I'd want to, I would want to find something that's interesting for people to watch. That people would love to come, come and chill, hang out, to uh, to watch though. And also, there's that big thing of like I can't really do that unless I have good energy. So I kind of have to pick days where I'm probably going to be able to have a lot of rest. Days and times for that. Oh, I didn't add the fleshy mass. Okay, so we got it. So kind of squishing here, stretching there. Gonna add a little bit of kind of a indication of like the abdominal region there. Yo, hi Swayze. Oh, did I set the timer? I don't think I did. What time is it? 7 to 6. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? T minus 21 minutes and 53 seconds. Okay, good. There we go. But you want to make like a, a mannequin like this into second nature. Uh, when you make a mannequin like this into second nature, it becomes a lot easier to handle other stuff. And uh, to handle adding the limbs to it later, of course. fact, I can show you how I might add the limbs on something like this. You might use like the tornado, for example, to kind of 
think about how the mass works on the limbs here. It's on the edges. So I like using like the top of the, the like the cube part of the rib cage sort of establish the, the rib cage for me sometimes when I'm doing these sort of abstract studies. Um, since I'm combining elements together here, I can use that as a starting point and then wedge the egg, the torso underneath it. Find like kind of like the line of action-ish sweep of the, pel of the spine. Create a pelvis that's sort of counterposed a little bit or twisted, like the body's just sort of twisting here. Thank you. Glad you like my work. I'm not that good. I'm also very fatigued today, so I'm not on, on my best game at the moment. Should maybe be more stretched. This, this is like the squished side, I want to say. This would be more stretched. I get very like very self-conscious and stuff and I get really scribbly. Um, which is a bad habit that I'm gonna try to break myself out of in the future. I'm always fighting that. But it helps if you take big, long, sweeping strokes uh, when you're trying to work stuff out to help you avoid uh, the kind of chicken scratchy sort of thing that I've fallen into lately, which I can break myself out of, and I have before. But you know, it's it's a crummy little habit that sometimes bad habits creep in, and you just got to work on them. Like this is kind of like all scribbly and stuff. And I could be like doing much more like kind of sweeping, confident sort of things. Sort of lines and stuff. But that's okay. It's like my, uh, I'm fatigued right now, so my hand and my eye aren't working quite the way I want them to. Struggling and being conscious of it, even when you are not on your best game, will sometimes pay off if you don't, like, you know, overdo it and hurt yourself. I sort of started with a cube and I'm carving into it with an egg shape here. It's an unusual way, to, uh, a little bit of a different way to approach it. You can use whatever tools you think might be suitable to sort of understand these shapes that you're trying to make.
the way you learned your fatigue all the time. Well, well. I mean, everyone's got to learn. You're only fatigued if you're feeling tired and fatigued and you can't concentrate or whatever. Um, I would say sometimes it's a good idea to exercise yourself when even when you are feeling a little bit fatigued. At least give it a shot and like discipline yourself to do it. But be conscious of your of your body and see and like if you really do feel like you're hurting yourself doing it, you're go you're about to hurt yourself doing it, then uh, stop. So I kind of judged myself this evening. Okay, I'm feeling a bit fatigued. It's okay. I'm not gonna beat myself up. Uh, this evening I'm just gonna cut it an hour short. Now if I was feeling really badly fatigued, if I was like feeling like like I'm gonna just completely collapse or something, I would have ended it sooner. I would have maybe canceled the glass. But I have just enough energy that I can I can do this stuff, and it'll pay off for me because. Uh, tomorrow I'll, I'll be in much better shape, drawing-wise, than having closed out the day like this. Just gotta make sure I have a nice restful sleep tonight. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? 14 minutes and 37 seconds left. 14 minutes left, folks. It's the home stretch of this shortened class session. Might actually be a good idea if I if I like stick to two hour sessions on the Friday classes maybe, because like I usually go to, I usually like go for like Soul Flora's class, and um, it's hard for me to do her class and prep for this. So maybe if maybe the Friday class could be more like a two two three hour depending on energy levels. Um, class that requires less prep or maybe like the prep class could be the Wednesday class and then we just repeat what we did on the Wednesday class uh, again with like some variation because like I was trying to I was trying to crunch some study before class making some new slides and stuff that's probably what helped help to exhaust me a little bit Are there any tips you could give for figure drawing? Um, replay the session. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, before I go, I can show you the slides we did, we made. Yeah, repeat class where we reinforce the info that we did on the pre on like Wednesday or something. That might be a good idea. Kind of like judging the shapes a little bit more. That I'm constructing. Anyway, like I said, Monday class, Monday animation class will be very fun. We will be, um, we will be drawing like and animating the flower sacks that we've been practicing in the figure drawing class. I may I'm gonna actually be getting trying to get a demo for some of that done over the weekend. So I can have that ready for Monday. Uh I'm, the, the demo that I'm gonna do is uh, actually partly for the game dev project I'm working on. I'm probably gonna have us animate a flower sack throwing something. Or some other things. And that'll be in addition to the lesser Richard Williams assignments that I'm going to have us do. But yeah, we are going to be like continually using the animator survival kit in conjunction with the other stuff that I'm teaching in that class. 
It's going to be focused mainly on the anime. It's going to be continually focused week, week by week on animated survival kit exercises. Flower Sack isn't specifically an animated survival kit exercise, but I think it's valuable to do it. And we'll be applying uh, animated survival kit stuff to it. Completed all the homework except for the Sakuga part, that's fine. If you want to for the Sakuga part, just, just play with it. Just have fun. See see what happens when you fuck around and just make something stream of consciousness. Like if it, that's that's like the main thing I want. Like it, even if like even beginners are welcome to try that out too. Like you don't need I'm not expecting like expert level Sakuga stuff. I just want to see people I want to see people who enjoy themselves messing around with animation. Even when they don't understand all the rules. It can be helpful to just play with the medium, you know? So if you want to have some fun messing with animation, you can try that out. Okay, Google, how much time left on timer? Nine minutes and 54 seconds remaining. Oof. I'm at, I'm getting close to my limit. What's probably going to happen is I'm going to probably going to go to sleep right after this, I think. And then I'll wake up um, several hours later and just start drawing and animating. Oh, also, um, actually, um, yeah, I think I'm going to put my pencil down, because I am starting to feel a little bit too, too grody right now, and it's probably would be best if I went over some of the, um, things that are going on right now. So, you keep drawing, keep drawing, and keep doing the, uh, the stuff for the rest of the session, but I'll just notify some people of some things here. Um, all right, here we go. Yeah, someone posted that in there. Good. Um, so first off, I had a job interview yesterday, and uh, there's some interesting details from that. I'm going to hear back from them Monday, they emailed me back on that. It went, it went really well, but the thing is, is uh, here's info about it in my Space Dad corner, the Spaceball Furies. Uh, so there's nothing definite yet, but I need artists and animators to post their portfolios in the Furies portfolio realistic, which is right here in uh, the Discord. Um, I'm looking for... Uh, I'm sorry. Because the interview that, con uh, that contacted uh, me is for an LA-based commercial documentary film company is doing an anthology short film series in partnership with Best Buy involving small teams of animators. Nothing is definite yet, but I will be hearing an update on that Monday, whether they'll be moving forward with me as one of the teams for, uh, for one of the films or not. But basically, they want me to field a small team of artists and animators so I'll be looking for people we, we can fit in with skills to get the project done. Animators, compositors, background painters, etc., etc. Um, I'll be looking mainly for people who, are, who have professional backgrounds to begin with, as this will be a very fast-moving project. But even if you're a student who hasn't uh, yet entered the industry, you should post, as you might fill a suitable gap we need. This will be a paid project, serious professional work. Outside of that, I'll be looking for people I might want to bring on board for the student game dev project, whether that gets put on temp uh, temporary on hold or not. It depends on how involved the film project or the project about is. So yeah, if you want to possibly per possibly be chosen for um, this paid work or for the game dev project we're working on, because we might need more people on that in the future. Um, the game dev project is a student project that's unpaid. But this other project that I'm talking about, that's like with an LA production company for a short film, that's a paid paid project. So um, the Furious portfolio reel section, uh, just like uh, you can post uh, samples of your work in your portfolio and your reel in here. I don't uh, like. Feel free to post whatever skill level, whatever skill level you are. I'm interested in seeing what are what are what people in our 
in my uh, class groups are capable of. Even if uh, I don't have a use for them right now. But you, know, you never know. I mean, there might be something in there that you're not seeing that might be useful for us. But yeah, um, there's that. Uh, what was the other thing? Mm -hmm. Well, that was the main thing. Yeah, the Game Dev Project is looking pretty neat so far, too. Um, I wanted to get to more work for it this weekend. I was going to get some more work on, on it Thursday, but I had the job in view, and I had to take care of a bunch of other stuff after. So I'm going to be working on the Game Dev Project some more over this weekend, which will also be warm-up and prep, potentially, for what they might have us start doing on the um, Best Buy thing, if I get chosen for that. But I'm going to be trying to get other professionals or like people who are like good enough to be like professional work professionally uh, as a as a first opportunity or whatever on this. Mainly going to be looking for pros um, because we because this is good, this is going to be a tight deadline thing that's like it has to be completed by December January by late December early January or something. Uh, it's not going to be that that long of a film. Like I think, well, I, don't, I think the runtime is going to be like thirty seconds or something, but thirty seconds a minute or whatever. I'll find out the full info, but um, it's gonna, we're going to have to make like really good, distinct animation for it in, the, in like a really distinct style uh, for the for our entry to the anthology. So I'm look, I'm going to be trying to get a hold of skilled animators and uh, skilled artists and background painters and compositors and whatever storyboard whatever i'll try to get we'll get a small team together a couple of the people on my game dev team a few of them anyway are going to probably be involved in it as well so yeah okay google how much time left on timer there's four minutes left Oof. Yeah, we don't have a bot to tell you what the Discord is right now, sadly. I, I want to fix that in the near future, though. Here, I'll, I'll link you the Discord in chat. There you go. Hopefully that invite link works. Whew. Yeah, I am bushed. Let's oh yeah, let's take a look before we go. What we actually did do today. Let's this real quick. So I'm gonna make sure that like this stuff gets uploaded this weekend on my Patreon for one thing. Uh, the some of the, the most important slides are gonna be going up on my Twitter on my Twitter. But uh, and uh, and I'll probably post them again. and I'll post them again in the Spaceball Furies class section on our Discord. Uh, oh, by the way, I almost forgot. If you want to join the Spaceball Furies, so you want to submit a portfolio or something, or you want to submit homework or whatnot, then um, the way you do that is you go to the opt-in channel section. You find the info for my group, which is the Spaceball Furies right here and you go to the enter your command channel and you type exclamation mark spaceball fury uh, uh exclamation mark spaceball furies i think they're like this person did for example and also exclamation mark student so you can um become enrolled and be pinged as a student and once you do that you get access to my class section where you can um see all the posts in here i think this is the previous slides that we did and this is in the twitter link so I'm going to do it for when I post some of the slides that we use tonight. Here's a class section where people have been posting some of the animations homework from last week. A little faster. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Gus did a pretty nice bouncing ball there. But yeah, um, Monday class we're going to be doing more stuff from the Animator Survival Kit and animating these little guys, the flower sacks that I've been having people practice with uh, for my Wednesday class. And you can post the, you can post uh, your homework in here to get feed. I encourage other people to give each other feedback in here too. Um, I want to start um, this Monday. I'm going to be encouraging people to do peer peer feedback of fellow animation work if we can get people doing that because that's an important skill as an animator to have to be evaluate other people evaluate and get critique of other people's work. It also helps you improve your own work. Um, So let's see here. What else was I going to mention? Something important that was also Discord related. Oh yeah, thank you for posting this. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm, I'm, okay, Google stop. Oh yeah, we were going to go over um, some of the slot. We're going to go over what we did today. So all right. Um, So first start with the stuff from last Wednesday, which was the this stuff. Yep, yep. Or that. So this one this one will probably be going up on my Twitter. This one will definitely be going up on my Twitter. This one will definitely be going up on my Twitter. This one needs a little bit more work, but um, I'll probably put it up when I do when I do. If I don't put this one up today, I'll put it up next week because I want to give him some more time to, to do this. Because this kind of hooks into kind of like what we're going to be doing here with this for next week. With understanding uh, how the anatomy of the torso a little bit more. But we're going to be working general to specific. So that was from Wednesday, that was from Wednesday, more from Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, I already put this one up in the Twitter posts, and that one up too. That was from today, that was from today, that was from today. Cool. All right, so yeah, thanks for coming, folks. I'm going to cut it now, cut it off now. Uh, thank you all for coming. I'm sorry we couldn't go for another hour, like you normally do, because I'm really fatigued right now. I do need to get enough sleep so I have energy for uh, study and uh, study and animation work tomorrow. So I'll see you guys Monday, Wednesday or Friday next week for our other classes, and I'm gonna go to sleep now. I still haven't found the magic formula to, to maintain energy levels, so I'm not fatigued every day. I really kind of figure out how to pace myself for that. But hey, you have you have off days and off days. So. Congratulations! Congratulations. Congratulations.